Hello and welcome to another episode of Hollywood Wargaming, and today we have a little bit more information spoiled for us in regards to the second wave of the Kashyyyk release, as the pre-orders are now live on Asmodee's site. And not only do we now have all the prices, but we're also getting some flavor text on the website and also some reveals as to which cards are going to be coming with these units, including some new upgrade cards. And not only are we starting to get some of our questions cleared up in regards to these units, but we do have some juicy new information coming with this reveal. So let's go ahead and jump right into it and take a look at the Rado Nasp Fluttercraft, which is likely the last Wookiee expansion we're going to be getting for quite some time. And while these reveals have been very exciting for the other three box sets, I think it's a little bit troublesome when you look at the Fluttercraft, and there's two main reasons for that that we will get into. But first up, we're going to see that the Fluttercraft is coming in at about $40 US, which in my opinion is a pretty fair price for a model of this complexity and size. From what we can tell in the images, it's definitely coming in a larger box, and I really was expecting it to be around $50, much like the Landspeeder. So that's definitely a major plus here. And when you read the description for this unit on the Asmodee site, there is some pretty interesting stuff here. The first of which is going to be a net positive, and that's the fact that this is boasting about bringing a new keyword into the game, titled Overrun. And while we currently have no idea what this keyword is going to do, I have a feeling it's related to those bombs that again are likely going to be a hardpoint upgrade. On top of that, the article does mention that this vehicle is fast, so we are likely going to see a speed 3 movement on it, which would make sense. But here's the real kicker I picked up from this text underneath the product, and that is the fact that they say that this is actually a heavy unit for the Republic faction. Something that I think is a little bit shocking to most players out there, I think we all thought it was going to be a support unit. I feel like that was even mentioned somewhere at one point. But the real kicker here is the fact that this vehicle is not going to synergize with that single pip Wookiee command card, which in my opinion is really bizarre and kind of shocking, and further diminishes the value of this unit and that command card, which were already pretty mediocre benefits for running such an extremely specialized force. And the fact that that command card now only benefits things like ATRTs or bark speeders and not the fluttercraft really does feel like some sort of misprint. It's just very bizarre and feels like kind of sand in the eyes towards the Wookiees as a sub-faction even more so. Like, okay, we weren't getting core troopers, that's fine, you can still run them in a Republic list, you can still have a Wookiee-themed army. But this Fluttercraft really was the first imagery we got of something becoming a full-blown sub-faction, with them actually having support vehicles, right alongside with the Command Cards and the Chieftain. And putting up that hard red tape between the synergy of these units is just a bit of a strange choice in my opinion. But hey, who knows, maybe this was a typo on the Asmodee website. We still can't see the unit card itself, maybe it will be a support vehicle, and somebody just carried the wrong notes over onto the webpage description. But lastly, we are going to take a look at the cards teased that are going to come with the Radonasp Fluttercraft, and this is my second issue that I have with this unit. When you look at all the cards that are going to be coming with the Super Tactical Droid, Dwarf Spider Droid, Magna Guard, something is obviously a little bit lackluster with the Fluttercraft's lineup, as the only upgrades you're going to be getting for this thing is comms and that hard point. There's no pilots on the unit, which is incredibly disappointing for a flyer vehicle, especially in that heavy slot. And when you look at how many pilots and crew upgrades we got for things like the AA-5 and the Lat LE, this is just very, very underwhelming. And you pile that on top of the potential concerns that I had with this unit's weapons, as mentioned in my previous video on the topic, and that all makes me further concerned about the overall appeal of this unit. Still, we haven't seen the unit card yet or any of the weapon profiles, so this is all, of course, speculation. But this is the one reveal from this pre-order that has detracted hype from the respective unit rather than build onto it. But before we move along and start taking a look at some of these Separatist reveals here, we are going to stop and notice that this is coming with a new comms upgrade card, one that is going to be in all four of these unit expansions, and this is titled Hacked Comms Unit. And right off the bat, we have no idea what this is going to be. There's a good chance it's going to be disposable, seeing as the Fluttercraft includes two in it, much like Yoda's Force Speed. And I think the obvious assumption here is that it's going to have something to do with receiving order tokens, be it on an enemy unit or perhaps even the unit that it has it equipped on. 
People are speculating this might be the first upgrade card that actually reduces your unit's points by perhaps doing something like not allowing them to be issued orders from a commander, which would be pretty insane and have a lot of strong implications on how Star Wars Legion is played. But who knows, for all we know this could be a disposable comms jammer. It's all up in the air, but it does look like it is one of the major upgrade cards that is going to be coming out with this wave's expansions. So definitely worth keeping an eye on there. But that will move us along to take a look at the Dwarf Spider Droid. And first up here, we are going to see that this is $29.95, which I was kind of complaining about in a previous video, but then somebody reminded me that the Republic ATRTs were $29.95, and I did end up buying three of them myself. And I guess that price creep from soft plastic to hard plastic has been here all along, so I'm not sure why I was originally surprised by that single Dwarf Spider Droid costing $30. And while I don't think that's the best price when compared to a lot of the other box sets we get in Legion, it's still definitely a fair price point, so again, I'm kind of redacting my complaints from the previous video. But of course, we are getting some flavor text on the webpage for this unit, and the first and most significant thing I picked out here is the fact that the Spider Droid is, in fact, going to be a support unit, which leaves me further questioning why that Wookiee Fluttercraft is a heavy, but that is kind of beside the point. After that, this is going to boast about the Dwarf Spider Droid being rugged and durable, which reinforces my belief that this is going to have the armor keyword, or at least red dice, and be a little bit more durable than your standard B1 squad. But lastly in the text, we are going to have something that is also hinted at in the cards, and that is the fact that this unit is going to have some sort of training protocol, which I think it's safe to assume is going to affect the AI keyword that this droid vehicle has. But that is, of course, ultimately speculation, but we'll segue us over to look at the cards that are going to be included in this box set, and we'll go ahead and start off with those previously mentioned protocols, as we do have three cards in here, which is going to be attack protocols, engagement protocols, and then also defensive protocols. And initially, I thought this was going to be a sort of flip card, similar to offensive and defensive stance for the Jedi, but with three different variations here, it looks like that's not going to be the case. And with Into the Fray pictured right below these cards, I'm assuming that this is going to be a training upgrade. And I gotta say that is extremely interesting. I did not expect this unit to have a training slot on it. That's not only super rare for droid troopers, but also super rare for vehicles in general. In fact, I would go as far to say that I'm pretty sure it's non-existent on any other vehicle in the game. Though it should be stated that we're not sure if this is actually a ground vehicle or a droid trooper yet. But either way, it is definitely taking me by surprise. And with these three cards revealed, I'm now extremely interested in seeing what the Dwarf Spider Droid has to offer. And who knows, maybe these protocols will actually be able to port over to other units like the BX series droids. Very, very interesting concept, and definitely adds a whole layer that I was not anticipating onto the Dwarf Spider Droid. But after that, we're going to have another surprise, and that's the portable scanners, which implies that this thing might have gear upgrade on it also. I mean, for all we know, they could just be throwing these cards into random box sets now just so players can have more access to them, but I'm not exactly sure if that's the case. It's definitely not what Legion has traditionally done, so it's safe to assume that it is going to have both training and gear upgrade slots. And while I don't want to complain about it not being thematic, it's definitely something we weren't expecting on this unit. But after that, we are going to see some comms upgrades, and we see that hacked comms unit appear twice here again, which implies that they're really going to be loading us up with this card during this expansion wave. And I'm not going to spend too much energy speculating on what it's going to do, but we're definitely going to be seeing a lot of it. And I gotta say here, there might be a slight error with the cards displayed, as we only see the flamethrower hardpoint upgrade in this spread, but we all know from the back of the box, as pictured on the same webpage, that it does also have that ion cannon. So there's a chance that that face down comms card is supposed to be an armament card, or perhaps there isn't actually two of the hacked comms units. We're not exactly sure, but there is definitely 100% a missing card in this spread, which kind of brings all of these spoilers into question, again, especially going back to that Fluttercraft. But that is going to complete our coverage of the webpage for the Dwarf Spider Droid and move us along to our next unit, which is going to be the STD. Of course, the Super Tactical Droid. And once again here, we have a lot of cool new information and stuff we didn't expect that really makes this unit a lot more exciting, even though its unit card hasn't even been teased or revealed yet. But first up here, we are going to see that the Super Tactical Droid is $17.99. And I gotta say, this one does feel like a bit of a creep in cost. Usually, Commander or Operative expansions that come with two models, such as Iden Versio or Cassian in K2, come in at the $19.95 mark, 
While the recent solo commanders that have been released in hard plastic, such as Callus or Lando, have only costed around $15, so I'm left wondering what exactly warrants this $3 increase on this single model unit. Even if these guys are going to be a bit taller and beefier than your standard hero, I can't see this droid taking up more material than someone like, say, Lando with his multiple capes. So I am a little bit miffed about this increase in cost for this commander expansion, and I would really hate to see all of our single model commander units go up to $20 in the near future. I remember not that long ago when all of the blister packs for Warhammer 40k were under $20, and now a Skink Star Priest costs as much as a box of Guardsmen used to. And I really hope that I can continue to boast into the future about how affordable Star Wars Legion is, and how a single $15 commander can completely augment how your entire army performs on the tabletop. But with that gripe aside, we are going to have some more information in text formats on the Super Tactical Droids webpage. And the main takeaway here is the fact that this box set is going to give you three different commander units. The first of which is of course going to be your standard super tactical droid, which according to the text on this webpage is just going to be an upgraded version of your standard T-Series, something I have no problem with. The T-Series is a great commander, and having an upgraded version of that that has its own command cards is definitely going to be a huge bonus worth paying for. But after that we're going to see that we do have two named super tactical droid commanders, which are Kalani and Kraken. Now I don't don't know a whole lot about any of these characters or how their unit cards are going to vary from one another, but it's very cool that we're getting three options in one box set, and I think that will inspire me to pick up more than one box set for myself. But that is going to move us along to take a look at the cards, and first up here we are going to have those three unit cards as previously spoiled in the text, followed up by a hand of command cards, which is pretty awesome here. We're very much used to generic heroes not having access to their own command cards, and instead relying on those generic command cards that come in the specialist upgrade box, and it looks like these are going to be usable by all three variations of the super tactical droids. And honestly, I wasn't too sure if they were going to include command cards or not here, so seeing these two unique characters and then also a hand of command cards is super exciting for the super tactical droid. And while I don't think the raw material of those cards alone warrants a $3 increase on this box set, it does kind of justify the extra cost in buying this, as you are getting a little bit more utility than a standard commander or operative expansion. Or at least, that is what I'm going to be telling myself when I purchase two of these guys. But after that, we are going to see a handful of upgrade cards that come with this Super Tactical Droid expansion, and they are going to reveal that he has a training, gear, commands, and comms upgrade slot, which, much like the Dwarf Spider Droid, is a bit more than I initially anticipated, though perhaps maybe not quite as surprising. But that is going to move us along to the final unit of this wave that is now for pre-order on the Asmodee site, and that of course is going to be the IG-100 Magna Guards. And once again, we have some more interesting reveals with this unit. First up here, we are going to have the fact that this is a $35 expansion, which is now pretty standard for the hard plastic boxes. As I mentioned earlier, this is going to be a box set containing six models in it, which is pretty respective when you consider the size of these Magna Guards and the various customization options we're going to have with them. But next up, we are going to have the flavor text on this unit's webpage on the Asmodee site that is going to reveal a few more things. And the first thing here I want to highlight is the fact that they make mention that these droids can continue fighting even after they have been dismantled and had their heads destroyed, and the emphasis on a statement like this implies that there is going to be some sort of emergency stim gimmick going on with this unit. Again, this is all speculation, but I think these Magna Guard are going to be quite durable and may have some interesting new keywords that change how they interact on the battlefield than your standard trooper unit. But the next thing I want to make mention of from this block of text is the fact that they say that this box set consisting of six models gives you enough to build two special forces squads. And when we take a look at the picture of the card spread for these IG-100s, we are going to see two unit cards in this box set, and that really does bring a lot of questions to mind. The first of which being, what is that second unit card? Is it a special version of the IG-100s? Perhaps General Grievous' personal bodyguard, much like we saw Inferno Squad alongside the Imperial Special Forces forces, or will it be something more akin to a strike team? And when Asmodee says you can build two squads from this box set, is that them simply referring to the two unit cards, or does it mean that each Magna Guard squad is going to be three models, and you can potentially just run two squads of three with no heavy weapon upgrades? Or our third option, are they discussing strike teams and saying that you can run a full squad of four, and then also a two-man strike team with whichever heavy weapon you decide to build? It definitely creates a lot more questions than it answers, and once again, I am more excited to see what's going to happen as more information is revealed to us. 
But things get even stranger again when they discuss the heavy weapon upgrades for the squad. They of course mention the Electro Whip and the Rocket Launcher that we saw, but they also mention a squad leader sporting something called a Precision Laser Dart. And I have to assume that's the guy holding that funky looking pistol, though I'm not exactly sure I assumed that was their standard sidearm, which we know does exist. And once again, more questions have been raised than answered, and it only gets more complex when you look at that card spread and peer onto the section where the heavy weapons are lying, and you don't see that upgrade card for the commander with a dart gun. Instead, there is just another IG-100 Magna Guard upgrade card, something that usually only appears in personnel slots, and now raises the question as to whether this squad is going to be one of the first Special Forces squads in the game to get access to personnel, or if this is just another weird gaffe with the card spread, or this IG-100 could be a heavy weapons upgrade. It's all very confusing, and I'm not really sure what to say here. I'm definitely left scratching my head, and now I'm super, super curious to get even more information on these guys, and I'm hoping these upgrades and unit cards are revealed at the same time, so I'm not left constantly out of the loop. But after that, we are going to see that the Magna Guards have access to grenades, comms, and training upgrades. Nothing too shocking there. We did expect these guys to have a lot of upgrades, and I really do hope they have two slots for training, as that tends to be a major perk for melee-oriented units. But again, that is something that time will tell. But that is going to wrap up all the information that was revealed to us with these products going live for pre-order on Asthma Day. As I said throughout the course of this video, it brings up a lot more questions than it answers. But it definitely has got me even more hyped up, especially for those super tactical droids and the Magna Guard, as it looks like they're going to be doing a lot more than we initially expected. But as always, if you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like down below. If you enjoyed the content and want to see more like this, consider subscribing to the channel and turning on notifications. And as always, until next time guys, take care.